to build a home and to make it yours. That's the goal. Not cookie cutter, not off the plans, but truly something that's your own. And today we're about to meet an incredible couple who have done just that with the most amazing and innovative tiny house. Hi, Shani. How hey. are you? Hey, Rice. Great to meet you. You too. G'day, Christian. How hey, are you, Bryce. mate? Nice to meet you too. It is lovely to meet you both. And thank you. This is a stunning tiny home that you've built. Thank you very much. Yeah, <laughs> thank we're you. Very so proud much. of it. Yeah, you should absolutely be very proud of this place. And what was it that inspired you to build a tiny home? It's actually stumbling across your YouTube channel. Uh, oh, yeah. Cool. So we discovered uh, tiny houses and already had an interest in alternative housing and just thought that it was realistic, that yeah. we could possibly do it too. Yeah, and I just think going smaller, downsizing our belongings, we were really drawn to that as well. Yeah. Just living a little bit more simply and a smaller footprint with land around us. Absolutely. <laughs> and you certainly have more nature here. What an amazing parking spot you've got. Yeah. yeah. Very lucky. We are very lucky. We've got an amazing land host who's been very generous and yeah, we're super grateful. And you are beautifully settled into this spot as well. You've got an incredibly impressive solar array over there. We actually did design in mind of, um, of us living here, like full time working here. Mm. And so a bigger solar array and more energy consumption was uh, obvious. Yeah. yeah. And now the house, this is just absolutely beautifully done. A lot of this was actually done as a DIY project, wasn't it? Uh, yeah, so it started off with a professional builder, but we ended up finishing all off ourselves um, with the help of uh, lovely friends. I'd like to name uh, Scott and Lena as the big contributors. Uh, yeah. So, yeah, we're really grateful. Like literally we've had blood, sweat and tears go into this house Mixed in together, all over the place. Like, <laughs> as, as one disgusting liquid. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that saying did not come out of nowhere. <laughs> no, no, it did not. And the materials that you've used in this home's construction are just so striking. I love the matching of the black metal with the Sushugiban cedar. Mm. Yeah, thank you. We kind of wanted to keep like a monochromatic uh, style with the design so there's no uh, distraction. And then you Lens move inside. The yeah, and you move yeah. inside and the green uh, and the wood kind of really just draws you in and holds the same sort of monochromatic style yeah. as well. And Chris like burnt every single piece of cedar himself. <laughs> I did, yeah. <laughs> In, in fear, in, uh, yeah. in terror, yes. <laughs> Why in terror? Oh, yeah. Because it was expensive. It was expensive <laughs> and I, uh, yeah, every inch that I burned was in suspense of messing it up. But I, I totally get that. There's nothing like taking a blowtorch to $100 per linear meter, right? <laughs> yes, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But I actually love the little um, places where it's crackled a bit more. Yeah. yeah. It kind of looks like Gives a character. crocodile skin. Yeah, yeah very yeah. much so. Yeah, beautifully imperfect. Yes. Now, can we talk about the dimensions of this home? Because it looks a little bit unusual. It looks quite a bit higher than normal. Yeah, so the standard height on the road is 4.25. Um, in height? Yes, in height. But with the pop-up, which comes up in the bedroom after, it comes up to, I think, 5.2 metres. It's 2.5 wide, .5 wide and yeah. 9 metres long. Mm -hmm. So how does your pop-up work? So um, when we get here, we have to um, unbolt in the inside where it's fixed um, with button screws. And once it's free, it can be pulled up. Um, yeah, the roof lifts up. And then we have to put in panels that are pre-built um, to the size. And once they're all in and fixed, that holds up the weight of the roof. And one of the things that I love about that pop-up roof as well is just this really unique shape that it creates in the house with the varying angles. It really gives it such a unique look. Yeah. yeah, yeah. We went through quite a few different, uh, you know, concepts in designing the outside. Our friends have been saying it looks like a sand crawler from Star Wars. Yeah. It does look a bit like a sand crawler. I can totally see that. <laughs> and I see you're also collecting rainwater here. Yeah, yeah. We have a 10,000 litre tank to collect the rainwater. Um, it has been raining a lot this yeah. last couple of years. So yeah. um, I think once it dries off a bit, we'll see if we've got a challenge there. And yeah. I do plan to have a pergola and maybe a carport on the other side to catch more later on. Yeah. Yes. yeah, because you've only recently moved onto this property, haven't you? Yes, yeah. yeah, we've only been here for about two months now. Yeah, we love living in here. We've imagined ourselves living in the designed space for so long. Yeah. Like Chris did all the design work himself and Photoshop planning, um, it's really exciting just to live in it. The only learning curve for us, I guess, has been the off-grid. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, fair enough. 
Well, speaking of all of that, I cannot wait to see inside the home and what you've done in there. Can we take a look? Of course. Yes. Come inside and get comfy, <laughs> Bryce. Thank you very much. Oh, wow. This place is incredible. Yeah, thanks, Bryce. I love the colors that you've used in this house. Thank yeah, you. Yeah, so do we. I'm really happy with what we landed on. Yeah. Chris's one stipulation with this house was no white walls. <laughs> no more white. I've lived <laughs> in white houses my whole life and yeah. just done with it. We kind of uh, landed on a description, which is mid-century modern Australiana <laughs> cabin. Yes, that, that's our <laughs> definition. I'm not quite sure what that aesthetic is, but I am sure you have completely <laughs> nailed it in this house because it just looks beautiful. Thanks. And the way that you have done the timber in here is just gorgeous. Yeah, cheers. We didn't do it all ourselves. We had the carpenter do the work for us. We just wanted to kind of offset the square kind of boxy mm. feel with that curve. Um, yeah. And that kind of just changes the dynamic in here. Yeah. We the were... high ceilings are good to create the space. Yeah, we were actually, um, remember picking up on a talk you did at a tiny house festival where you spoke about a house that had the Fibonacci sequence in it. Mm. And mm -hmm. Yeah, we definitely wanted to invite more uh, natural elements into the house. First of all, I'm amazed with how well that has worked in this house. And secondly, I'm just amazed that somebody was paying attention to one of my talks. <laughs> <laughs> That's uh, phenomenal. Yes. And I like that you've got the second entrance as well. Thank you. So we do have plans to have that be our back entrance. So we'll make a little carport, we'll drive the car in, we'll hop in and put our shoes straight into our shoe storage, which is positioned right next to the back door. So no dirty feet in the house. Yeah. And good for airflow. We just wanted lots of openable doors and windows just to create a good cross breeze. And this lounge here is just brilliantly done. Firstly, it's very clever the way that you've raised it to add all of that storage. Yeah, I thought you'd enjoy that. Um, <laughs> we, we did see a lot of great design uh, options for storage. Thought instead of doing a storage loft higher, we do our, our storage lower and lift our lounge. We've got space for our work gear, mm -hmm. our camera equipment. We've even got some pull-out desks. Plus, You've got pull-out desks in there. Yeah. yeah. That is such a good idea. <laughs> Working from home, you don't want to always be reminded of the fact that this is your office too. So yeah. even for you being able to tuck that away and hide it so you don't have to think of work is a really nice feature. It just makes it easy to push it away and that's work done for the day. Yeah. Like closing clock, a door. Clock off. And we just jump yeah. in and enjoy our lounge. Yeah. Yeah. And you've got the little table there as well? Yes, we do. We actually have um, the little round coffee table, but also a larger dining table so we can share that with friends, uh, the space with friends and have dinner. Yeah, it can also be moved out the way if we need to. We got a nifty little removable caravan coach arm. So yeah, the whole space is transformable. And of course, you've got the beautiful wood stove here too. Oh yes, <laughs> another New Zealand import uh, <laughs> besides you. <laughs> um, yeah, it's um, beautiful. Beautiful, beautifully made. We couldn't go past the Roaring Meg. Uh, John was really lovely and helpful too to get yeah. us all set up and understanding how it works. Having the raised lounge as well, we're kind of level with that heat zone. It's yeah. worked out really exactly, well. Exactly, yeah. That's a really good idea. And you've got the telly up here as well? Yeah, it's actually quite uh, tricky to design the space with the television directly on the wall. So we ended up going for a swing arm. So you can basically push it onto the wall when we're not using it and then swing it out and redirect it to see it from all sides of the booth. Yeah, we didn't want it to be an eyesore covering all the beautiful wood. So yeah, we were pretty happy with this choice. And one of the other things that I noticed in here is all of these large windows that just provide the most incredible vista into the outdoors. Yeah, so again, part of the design uh, brief was we want to uh, be connected with nature yeah. and so bringing the outside inside meant the panoramic windows. That was one of Shani's design yeah. uh, That was yeah, one of my non-negotiables is yeah. the big square windows. I want to see big, big landscape. Yeah. yeah. And especially when you're in such a beautiful parking spot as this one, Absolutely. you just can't beat it. Yeah, we wanted to feel like we were part of nature in this house. And I think blending in the green of the interior with the green of the landscape outside really ties it all in and makes us feel part of nature. And then your kitchen, this is really special. All of the timber just becomes really dominant in this space, doesn't it? Yeah, thanks for us. We selected that just to sort of offset the green a little bit more um, to balance it out. Uh, I think it works beautifully. And it looks like you've got a lot of storage in the kitchen too. Yes, we definitely wanted to make sure everything was put away, that it wasn't open on shelves and feeling really cluttered 
because a tiny house being tiny, things can feel cluttered really quickly. We just wanted it to be all the way, looking neat, minimal. Our washing machine is concealed behind doors, our fridge. We just really wanted to be able to access things when needed and put them away. I really like that idea, just keeping it very clean, very simple, and then when it's not in use, out of sight, out of mind. Yeah. And then of course you do still have easy access to the things that you use frequently, like your sink and the stove and kettle. Yeah, we have tea multiple times a day, so that's definitely always <laughs> out on the counter. Honestly, uh, I probably would have hidden the stove tops if I could have, <laughs> but it was, it was harder than it seemed. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we had to make a few design changes along the way, um, but we're really happy with how it turned out. And our beautiful cabinet maker actually cut out that little piece of wood for us to hide away dirty dishes in an emergency. <laughs> Always important to have. And this is a kitchen with a view. Yeah, it's nice to actually look out at nature while we're making some food. And uh, we actually have the big gastro windows as well to open it up and let the fresh air in. So we can basically have like a nice servery uh, situation with our friends during uh, cookouts. Yeah. And again, bringing nature into the home, you've got the planter box up here as well. Yeah, we definitely looked into um, how many plants we could fit into our house. They tend to take a bit of a footprint in the home. So what better thing to do than to just put them above your heads. Absolutely, it really lifts the eye to a nice touch. Thank you. And through there, we've got your bathroom. Yeah. Yeah, come have a look. Come on. Yes, please. Again, this room is really nicely done. Yeah. Really good sized shower in here. Yeah, yeah. it's a 1200. I didn't skimp on the luxuries. You yeah. certainly have not. And I like how you've got the concrete look in the shower too. That's a nice touch. Thank yes, you. yeah, we uh, obviously can't have uh, real concrete for specific reasons to do with weight, but this definitely uh, looks the part and came out really beautiful. It certainly does. Nice vanity here too. And again, you've done a lot to bring those beautiful timbers into this room. Yeah, our cabinet maker, Gary, he did our bench top in the kitchen as well. And yeah, we just really loved his work and wanted to include it as much as we could. And you've got these wonderful big mirrors in here as well. Thank you. Yeah, it definitely makes the space feel much bigger in here, especially with the ceiling following through. Mm -hmm. And yeah, there's cabinetry behind all of those mirrors as well. Great. Yeah. Got to have that extra storage. Yes, yep. hidden away. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And on the back of the sliding door, we actually have a really large full length mirror, which is awesome for trying on clothes. Another one of Shani's requests. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> and we've got the composting toilet in here as well. Yes, it was interesting trying to adjust to that, uh, but we wouldn't go back from it. It's, uh, it's fantastic, no smells whatsoever. Yeah. yeah, and the amount, like we did the calculations on the amount of water you use mm. flushing a toilet, yeah. and it's just, it just was a no-brainer. Yeah. yeah, it's yeah. actually pretty shocking, eh? Yeah. yeah. And then we have your sleeping loft upstairs. Yeah. yeah. Can we take a look? <laughs> of course. Absolutely. All right. Oh, wow. Just being able to walk into a loft <laughs> and stand up like this is such a novelty. Yeah, we were waiting for you to come and see. Yeah, this is just for you. <laughs> how tall it was. This is just for you, Bryce. <laughs> Thank you so much. You built it just for me. I love it. Yeah, it's nice to be able to walk up in the loft. Um, we do notice a lot of tiny houses have crawl in uh, yeah. lofts um, with ladders. No offense to them, but we just didn't want to crawl into bed and out of bed. And yeah, just there's a lot of design elements in that choice. Having the pop up like this, and especially done the way that you've done it, because it feels solid. It still feels like you're in a home that has very solid walls, a very solid roof. It, it's not like a pop-up caravan sort of feeling in no. here. I especially like what you've done up here. That just looks like such a cozy space. Yeah, it definitely yeah. is cozy to sit up there and also have the view of the treetops to look out onto. It's just an, an extra space to come and chill. Yeah. yeah. Often with tiny houses, there's only like so many spaces that couples or families can have separate, out of choice, obviously. Uh, so it's good to have those little uh, extra design elements put in. And to that end, one of the other special features about this loft is the closing door. So the story behind the closing door is that one, we knew we'd have a wood stove. Uh, so the heat often uh, we found pocketed up in tiny house lofts and made it impossible to sleep. And also with noise, like different times of day, like uh, going down and have, making breakfast earlier or like having late nights, chatting with friends, we can just shut that door, have our separate uh, yeah. time frames if we need that. Yeah. And the actual sleeping space here just looks so cozy as well. And you've done such a great job of very 
strategically placed windows. Yes, we wanted to be able to be in bed and be able to open the windows and breathe in the fresh air, Sweet cross, cross breeze, breeze. Yes. Yeah. and just outlook onto the beautiful scenery that we've surrounded ourselves with. And again, the darker colours in here, the beautiful soothing green, all of the timber, it really does give this space a very relaxing feeling, doesn't it? It really feels cozy and like very natural kind of cave like space to mm, be in. Like a little sleeping den. Yeah. And so you've only been living full time in the home for about two months now. But so far, how is life in the tiny house working out for you? Yeah, fantastic. No complaints. We, we, love, it. we love it. Yeah, it's, it's just an adjustment with the off grid. But yeah, like we're not missing out on anything. Um, originally, when um, I was designing the tiny, I had this conversation with Shani that there's certain spaces in our house that we never use, like a dining table area, hallways, mm. staircases, spare bedrooms, spare bathrooms. They're just so much wasted space that you know, it would be very, very um, seldom that we would use. So now we use every part of our house. So now that we're finally living in this house, we just feel so at home. Never before have we had a house that's been completely custom designed to how we live mm -hmm. and the amount of design work that has gone into it. So to be living in here in real life, it's, yeah, it's, it's surreal. Yeah. We, yeah, we've never felt more at home than what we do now. Yeah, we had a moment, it was probably about a month before we moved in, where we got the couch cushions and it was just like a sunny winter afternoon and we laid on the lounge and looked out the window and all of a sudden it felt like our home and yeah. that was a big transition point. Yeah, and we had a cup of tea. It, <laughs> felt, it felt like home and we had a cup of tea. Yeah. <laughs> and can we talk about the cost that was involved in building this home? Uh, yeah, sure. So originally we had a budget of 130000 but there's definitely been some hiccups along the way that I'd say the total tally's up to about 150. 150, I think, is a really great result, especially when you're doing something so different and so unique. A few hiccups along the way are definitely to be expected, and ultimately you have built a lot of home here for that money. Yeah, yeah. thank you, Bryce. This really is just such an incredible home that you've built for yourselves. I can see how much care and attention to detail you have poured into each and every aspect of this design and the result is really just an amazing home that you've created. Thank you so much for sharing it with me. Thanks Bryce. Thanks for coming. <laughs> Pleasure's all mine. Christian and Shani have done the most incredible job with building this home. Being inside this tiny house, honestly I can't compare it to anything I've seen before. There are so many wonderful and unique ideas that have come about simply because they have truly poured so much of themselves into this build. This really is an amazing place that they now get to call home. <laughs>